Hey everybody. For the past few years I've been living in the Pacific Northwest, which has made astrophotography very difficult. But recently I moved to Eastern Idaho, which has like a Bortal 2 sky, and I would say in the past month I've done more astrophotography than I have in the past year. And while this has been great, it's also brought up a number of problems, mainly with the ASI Air. I've just been encountering all sorts of weird issues that I've never seen before, and that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. Hopefully I can give you enough troubleshooting tips that way if you encounter similar problems, it won't ruin your night. And I gotta say, I think it's kind of odd because I've been using the ASI Air since like 2019, the very first edition, and I really haven't had any serious issues the entire time, really until the past month. I think part of this is due to the new camera that I'm using, which is the 2600 MC Air, which I've done a preview video on. And during my test, I was using the beta firmware, which was updated like every single night, which was kind of annoying. But point being, any problems that I was facing, I chalked up to beta firmware. But now that ZWO has released the official firmware and I'm still encountering problems, that's got me a bit worried. So the first thing I wanna do is talk about some of the problems I've encountered and how I managed to fix them. The first problem I wanna talk about involves 300 second law exposures. This was actually discovered by my friend Steve who was out here shooting with us the last few nights. The problem he had is he was doing his typical five minute long exposures with a narrowband filter. Things were looking good for the first 15 images. And at that point he said, all right, it's getting late. I'm gonna go home and get some sleep. And he left his gear running. When we checked the gear in the morning though, we saw that pretty much right after he left, his photos got unnaturally dark. And while we could see some of the brightest stars, that was about it. This was very odd because we knew the exposure didn't change. We knew the sensor temperature didn't change. There were no clouds. There was no obvious reason why the images looked different. So I emailed ZWO and they got back to me within a few days and said, this is actually a bug with the ASIR software where if you're taking a five minute long photo or 300 seconds, for some reason, occasionally it'll take a one second long exposure instead. And the problem was he left his gear running all night long and this happened after, again, about 15 images. So the rest of the night was wasted due to this annoying little bug. And then on a following night, again, just as soon as he left, he started getting white images on his iPad, just completely pure white for no discernible reason. I have to say it's kind of odd that both times as soon as he left, things started acting up. It could have been the Aurora causing all kinds of weird issues. That was definitely a cool sight to see, but without going down a rabbit hole, I do think it's kind of odd that sometimes people have this weird effect on cameras and ASIRs. There definitely seems to be something to that. Although that sounds insane, I know. Anyway, once I saw that his camera had the white images going, thankfully I caught that. The way I fixed that one was to turn off the little switch for the main camera in the ASIR. That basically powers it off. Then I turned the switch back on inside the menu, restarted the auto run, and there were no more white images. I don't know what the underlying cause was, but at the end of the day, we fixed the problem and the rest of the night was salvaged. But this brings me to another issue I encountered just last night. I'm trying to get like 30 plus hours of data on the rotting fish nebula, great name for that. And about midnight or so, right after I'd gone to bed, the camera started acting up, of course. As you can see here, part of the image is just kind of black and then there's a white bar at the bottom or sometimes part of the image is visible. I'm not quite sure what that's about. Then things started to look even more crazy and eventually the camera apparently crashed and that forced the auto run to end the shooting sequence, go back to home and give up. And oddly enough, I was having all kinds of nightmares last night about my ASIR having problems. I guess I really was worried about it. And when I woke up at 3 a.m. to go check things, I realized something was very wrong. Thankfully, after restarting the ASIR, that fixed it, and I was still able to get another two hours worth of data, but still, I missed out on at least three hours of good data that I could have captured. My point with all these stories is that the common variable is that we were not looking at the iPad all night long. We actually wanted to get some sleep and that was the main culprit. So one of the best tips I can give you is if you can afford to, try to stay up with your gear all night long and keep an eye on things because the worst thing is if you finally get a clear night, it's wasted due to software glitches. That's very frustrating. And if you do encounter an error, there's two or three different things you can try. The first is to restart the ASI error. 
nine times out of 10, that should fix the problem. Or if you don't want to go to that length, because that means you have to redo the guiding calibration, potentially refine your target, etc. Alternatively, you could try turning on and off the camera using the switch, as I mentioned earlier. That might also solve whatever problem is going on. I've also seen where the photos just never load onto my iPad for no reason, mainly with the new 2600 Air camera. And sometimes just pausing the auto run and then restarting it will fix that problem. Next, I want to give you some general IT advice because with this latest firmware update for the app and the cameras and everything else, ZWO has broken the Android version. Every time you click on enter device, the app crashes. And I really hope that nobody has gone out on a dark sky trip over the last few days only to encounter this problem and not be able to shoot. That would drive me absolutely insane. Thankfully, I have an iPad, so I was able to work around this issue. The current workaround, according to ZWO, is to download an APK file and then use that to install, I think, an older version or a beta version. I'm not quite sure. But for those that are not technically savvy, that's just not going to work. We need an official update that just handles everything. But my point with all this is just to say that as an IT guy, one of the things you learn is generally you want to turn off auto updates for critical devices, whether that's your computer, your phone, in this case, the ASIR app and more. And I want to be clear, this is not just ZWO pushing out bad updates, but Microsoft, Apple, pretty much everybody these days will rush out an update, break things, and then you're stuck with a broken machine until you can find a workaround. So what I'd recommend you do, especially for the ASIR app, is turn off auto updates, assuming that you have a stable version of the app and things are working well. And then let's say there is a new version, you can do some research first, make sure there's not any serious issues, and then decide to upgrade yourself if that's what you want to do. Another issue I encountered over the past few days is the ASAR's Wi-Fi name. As you know, all the ASARs have virtually the same name, just with a different string of characters. And I can only imagine how confusing it would be if you go to a star party and there's dozens of ASARs all with virtually the same name and the same password. So if you haven't done this already, I recommend you go into your ASIR settings and rename the Wi-Fi network to something that stands out and you know it's yours. You might also want to change the password because if you leave it to the default, even if somebody knows it's not their ASIR, they can still get in very easily. Not that they'd want to screw you up, but sometimes accidents happen. Speaking of star parties, if you're around a lot of ASIRs, you've probably noticed how the transfer speeds and the connection have serious issues because there's so much interference. And that's why you might want to change the broadcast frequency from 2.4 to 5G. This should help to overcome that interference, hopefully anyway. It's worth a shot. Just keep in mind that when you have the 5G network turned on, the range of the network will be significantly reduced, but the transfer speeds will be much faster. Next, I want to touch on dithering because this is a fantastic setting you can turn on in the ASIR, but there is one big drawback. The problem is that depending on your settle settings, let's say you have it set for 10 seconds at one arc second, then over the span of 80 or 100 photos, you might lose up to 20% of your night just stuck in this limbo state where you can't take photos. That might not be a big deal if you're only shooting for two or three hours, but if you're trying to go eight or nine hours or more, and you're shooting for three or four nights, you could potentially lose an entire night's worth of shooting just sitting around waiting for the settle to complete. And again, in my experience, I was losing about 20% of my total images waiting for that dither. So what I found is that rather than doing a dither after every photo, I can do it after every two photos. And in this way, I can get all the photos that I want throughout the night and I'm not wasting time. Although you may want to change the number of pixels to accommodate for the fact that you're doing half the amount of dithering as you normally would. In other words, if I normally do five pixels for my dither, I might want to change it to 10. And in this way, you can get the best of both. You still get the benefits of the dither, which can remove hot pixels, color model, thermal noise, etc., and you're able to get a full night's worth of data, unlike before. Let's move on and talk about power next, because I think one of the fundamental issues affecting our ASIRs and our cameras is the power source. And I'm still not 100% sure if that's my underlying problem with the 2600 Air, if it said it's not getting enough power, or if it's just buggy software, it's hard to say. But I'm currently leaning towards there being a power issue. Because right now, I've got my Jackery battery with a 12 volt DC cable going into my new AM5N. Then I take another DC cable 
and I go from the power output of the AM5N into the 2600 Air. And I don't know if that's giving it enough power, which could explain all the weird problems I've been having the last few nights. So what I'm going to be trying next is to have two batteries. I'll have a smaller little Jackery battery with another 12 volt cable just powering the mount by itself. And then the larger battery will be powering the ASI Air and of course the camera as well. My hope is that this will fix all the weird camera issues I've been having because the camera is getting a more steady supply of power. And this brings me to another issue that I've seen. For whatever reason, the AC adapters seem to cause all kinds of problems for the ASI Air. And I think it's just again an issue of it not getting enough power. But because the AC adapter has to switch from AC to DC, I've heard it can also drain more out of your battery. So your battery is not going to last nearly as long as it should. For these reasons, I highly recommend just using a straight DC connection whenever possible. And in fact, a couple years ago, I was teaching a workshop and one of the guys kept getting exposure failure, exposure failure. And we weren't quite sure what the problem was, but when we swapped out the AC adapter for a DC cable, that seemed to fix the problem. And while we're on the subject of power, I've been recommending the Jackery batteries for the last few years because that's what I use. And I really haven't had any issues, but I've been doing a lot more research lately and there does seem to be some problems that people are having with the Jackery batteries specifically. Feel free to do your own research on that and see what conclusions you come to. But my point here is just that if you have a Jackery battery or you don't have any battery yet and you're thinking about getting one, you might want to do some research and see what kind of problems people have and maybe look for an alternative that should be more stable. Another thing we should touch on very quickly are USB cables, especially if you have a DSLR because if you don't have the right USB cable for your DSLR, you're gonna encounter all kinds of problems when you're trying to take your photos. This is also an issue with the ZWO cameras to a lesser degree. And I will say that I'm using the 2600 Air, I'm getting all kinds of problems and there's no USB cable whatsoever because the Air is built into the camera body. So I think for a lot of us, really the problems we're having are not USB related, they're more either power related or software glitch related. And the final thing I wanna talk about is how to report the software glitches that you might be encountering throughout the night. So let's say you encounter an error when you're shooting and something's just not right. The first thing you should do is start taking screenshots. Take a screenshot of the screwed up photo or the error message that you get, whatever can help diagnose the problem. Once you have at least one or two screenshots, you can go into the info menu of the ASIR and look for the little bug icon. You will need to sign up for a ZWO account, which means you have to go back to your home Wi-Fi network temporarily to set that up. But once that's complete, then you can go through and submit a bug report. You'll want to put as much info as you can, and it should automatically get the logs from the night. And I think if we can all work together to submit these bug reports, hopefully that will give ZWO enough information to start fixing these problems a lot faster. Because if we're just commenting on forums and complaining, that's not really going to do much. They need screenshots, they need the logs, and overall if we just do the straight bug report, that should get to them easier. Which leads me to really the final thing I want to say, is that when we're doing astrophotography, we need the gear to work. And if it's not working, then we can't shoot. That's just not a good situation to be in. And this might be a good time to look into alternatives, which I know many of you have already done. For example, Nina. This is probably the most popular program out there, which can control your mount, your camera, and everything else. Now, to be honest, I've tried Nina very briefly. I couldn't really figure it out and I give up, but I know plenty of people like it and they find it very easy to use. If you don't want to use Nina, there's also the ASI Studio applications, which are rudimentary but in a pinch, they could work. Of course, there are plenty of other tools that you can use like SharpCap and more, but I'll leave that up to you to find an alternative. My main takeaway is just that the ASI Air in its current state is more buggy than I've ever seen, especially with some of the newer cameras, which could be power related. I think that's certainly a culprit, but my hope is that if we all start submitting these bug reports as soon as they happen, then ZWO can get the information they need and they can get this stuff fixed within a week or two or at most a month. That way we can all get back to shooting and capturing some amazing images. But if you have any troubleshooting advice or recommendations, feel free to leave a comment down below. That's all I've got for you today though. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a clear night and I'll see you in another video.